Okay, so the last step would be to add evolutionary events to these trees as tick marks where it makes sense to our character matrix that we made previously. So this might make more sense as we go through this. So we're gonna start with the trait of jaws first. So if you remember our out group, our lamprey does not have a jaw. So this is gonna represent the ancestral characteristic. So this lamprey is representing this ancestor down here. So jaws evolved after lamprey. Lampreys are out group and they do not have jaws. So sharks, salamanders, frogs, lizards, tigers, gorillas, and humans have jaws. So on this first tree up here, for jaws to exist in all these organisms, there must have been an evolutionary event around here. So all of these organisms have jaws because they are related to this common ancestor. All right, the same thing with the next tree over. So lampreys don't have jaws, yet everything else does. So there must have been an evolutionary event here. And then the last one, there must have been an evolutionary event here where jaws evolved and everything else has jaws because they're related to this organism. All right, next we're gonna look at lungs and looking at our character matrix, we see everything but sharks and lampreys have lungs. So the absence of a lung is the ancestral trait. So we're assuming the tree starts off no lungs and then lungs must have evolved at some point. Okay, going to this first tree where we can make sense where everything has lungs but sharks and lampreys, we could have an evolutionary event right here. All right, so some ancestor evolved lungs here on the tree and then everything else after that ancestor that is related to that ancestor will have lungs as well. Going to the next tree over, so there must have been an evolutionary event around here where some ancestor evolved lungs and everything related to it afterwards will have lungs as well. And then the last tree gets a little tricky. All right, since lampreys do not have lungs, but salamanders, lizards, tigers, frogs, gorillas, humans do, and sharks are way out over here, there must have been multiple evolutionary events where this tree would make sense. We could either have an evolutionary event here, so lungs evolved in this ancestor, and then everything else related to this ancestor is going to have lungs, but sharks don't have lungs. So again, to make sense of this, we have to have a second evolutionary event for lungs where lungs were lost in the sharks. So following this tree, we see that lungs evolved. So all these ancestors have lungs and then the lineage of sharks must have lost their lungs in order for sharks to be missing their lungs. So it, for this to make sense with lungs, we have to have two evolutionary events. Okay, so the next trait we're gonna look at is amniotic membranes and amniotic membranes evolved in reptiles. So reptiles and mammals have them while amphibians and fish do not. So the first tree, pretty straightforward. Since frogs are amphibians and salamanders are amphibians and they are missing the amniotic membrane. All right, while lizards, tigers, and gorillas and humans do have it, we can simply just put an evolutionary event here, meaning the ancestors didn't have amniotic membranes until about right here when they evolved. And then everything else after that that is related to this ancestor is going to have an amniotic membrane as well. All right, going to this tree with the amniotic membrane, sharks, lampreys, salamanders, and frogs do not have it. All right, going down to our character matrix, you could see that they all have the ancestral trait, which is the absence of an amniotic membrane. So for this tree to make sense, a couple of evolutionary events must have happened. So we could have... So there's a few ways we could do this. We could either have an evolutionary event here, 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 and here, where we're saying all of these ancestors did not have amniotic eggs, but at some point during the lizard's lineage, amniotic membranes evolved. And at some point during the tiger's lineage, amniotic eggs evolved. At some point during the gorillas, amniotic eggs evolved. And at some point during the humans, amniotic eggs evolved. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is that amniotic eggs evolved here, meaning everything else after this ancestor is going to have amniotic eggs. But then we could say it was lost in the salamander and lost in the frog. So following this tree, no amniotic eggs, and then it evolved. So following this lineage, all these ancestors have amniotic eggs. But then as we turn down the salamander's lineage, we see that amniotic eggs was lost again, resulting in salamanders not having an amniotic egg or amniotic membrane. And the same thing with frogs. So all these ancestors have amniotic eggs. As we go down the frog's lineage, it was lost again. So frogs do not have amniotic eggs. So which way should we do this? Should we have these three tick marks where we have amniotic eggs evolve here, but then lost here and here? Or should we do it the other way 
where amniotic eggs evolved independently in lizards, tigers, gorillas, and humans. Well, the rule of thumb is that we should always have the least amount of evolutionary events on our tree. All right, the least amount of evolutionary events is most likely to be accurate. So we always want to pick the solution that has the least amount of tick marks. So this would be a better option because this is explained with three tick marks versus the other example, which had four tick marks. All right, moving down to this bottom tree with the amniotic eggs again. So lampreys obviously don't have it. That's the ancestral trait. Salamanders don't have it. However, lizards do. So we could add a evolutionary event here. So at some point during this lineage, this ancestry evolved amniotic membranes. But then sharks had to have lost the amniotic membrane. So following this up, we're saying another evolutionary event here where sharks lost it. So now sharks don't have it. And then following this lineage again, all these answers have the amniotic membrane, but then it was lost in frogs as well. All right, the next characteristic is hair. So looking at our chart, we could see that tigers, gorillas, and humans have hair, while sharks, lizards, salamanders, frogs, lampreys do not. Okay, so this top tree is pretty straightforward. We could add an evolutionary event here where this ancestor evolved hair, resulting in tigers, gorillas, and humans having hair. And this tree gets a little bit more complicated. So we can have an uh, evolutionary event here where this ancestor evolved hair, meaning tigers, gorillas, and humans will have it. But this is also saying frogs would have it. So we have to add a second evolutionary event saying frogs lost the hair. All right, going down to this bottom tree, again, we can have an evolutionary event here saying hair evolved in this ancestor, meaning everything else after it would have it. But again, frogs don't have hair, so there must have been a second evolutionary event for this tree to make sense where frogs lost hair. All right, the next characteristic is having no tail. So the ancestral trait is having a tail while the derived is not having a tail. Okay, so this first tree, there's a couple ways we could do this because frogs, gorillas, and humans do not have tails. All right, so they have the derived characteristic. So we could either say that no tails evolved here. So at some point, this ancestor evolved to no tails, but then tails were re-evolved in lizards and tigers, or there's a simpler explanation. So this took three tick marks, but there's an easier explanation than this. So instead of saying, instead of saying having no tail evolved here, we could say that during the frog's lineage, no tails evolved. So again, ancestral trait is having tails following the lineages up, and then at some point, having no tail evolved. So that was a derived characteristic. And then same thing going this way. So all these ancestors have tails. And at some point over here, this ancestor lost tails as well. All right, so since this ancestor lost tails, that means gorillas and humans don't have tails. So this is a simpler explanation because this took two tick marks instead of three. Going to this tree, again, the ancestral trait is having tail or having tails. So we're following this lineage. All these ancestors have tails. And then we could say that some ancestor evolved no tails right here where this tree makes sense. So everything related to this ancestor, which is frogs, gorillas, and humans, are lacking a tail because this ancestor evolved no tail. And then going to this tree to make sense of this, we could do the same thing again where the ancestor has tails. That's the ancestral trait. And then somewhere over here, one of these ancestors that is common between frogs, gorillas, and humans lost their tail. That was the evolutionary event. Okay, and the last trait is being bipedal. All right, so all of these organisms are not bipedal except for humans. That is the only one with the derived characteristic of being bipedal. All right, so for each one of these trees, we can add a tick mark down the human lineage where the ancestor evolved being bipedal.